How can we engineer a robot that interacts with the ground similar to a real dog? To analyze this, we first have to understand the actuation principles in and around the joints of legged animals. The rigid links, in this case bones, are manipulated by a muscular tendon system. In contrast to standard robotic devices, both muscles and tendons act as compliant elements, sustaining large impact forces and storing potential energy whilst falling or running. This then allows the animal to interact in a compliant way with the environment and locomote very efficiently. While the leg is compressed, energy is stored in the muscles and released again before liftoff. To adapt these mechanisms to a robot, we had to rethink the mechanical design. Instead of connecting the motor and gearbox directly to the link, as done in Olaf, we included a spring in series. This is called a series elastic actuator. Similar to nature, the spring protects the gearbox from impact forces and allows for energy storage. Measuring the spring deflection and applying Hooke's law, we get precise information about the actual joint torque. By moving the actuator correctly, the actual joint torque can be controlled. Based on these principles, we built a new quadruped robot with steel springs in all 12 joints. All the actuators are tightly integrated at the hip joint to make the moved segments as lightweight as possible. The low inertia at the end effector allows fast leg motions and reduces impact losses. This new robot is called Starlet. Let's go back and drop some dogs. OK, the robot doesn't break. Instead, he passively bounces around due to the mechanical springs, something we don't see in the natural counterpart. To mitigate this bouncing, Starlet has to be controlled continuously throughout the whole drop. Let's have a look at this process in detail. First of all, we have to detect contact. After making contact with the ground, the joint angles, body acceleration and rotation rates can be measured. With this information, the base position can be precisely estimated. To control the robot, we virtually apply forces on the main body. This allows us to imitate the required dynamics needed to stabilize the robot's orientation and position. These forces are distributed to the contact points and subsequently to the individual joints. Applying this principle, we can achieve quite natural behavior. Starlet can react to lifting its foot and pushes. Furthermore, we can start to become more dynamic and fast in our maneuvers. As an example, Starlet can perform a trotting gait. He can do so even if there are obstacles in its way. In such maneuvers, the spring in series contributes to the passivity of the system. The springs in the joint are compressed after landing to store energy and released again before liftoff, increasing the running efficiency. Despite all these efforts, there's still a long way to go until legged robots will support us in our daily tasks.